Council of Churches. We, we did have some attendees, but Kitty Kelly is from the Council of Churches, and she said she was very disappointed that she wouldn't be able to attend, but the Episcopal Church, um, she has a job down there at the point today, so she wouldn't be able to make it. But she said thanks for asking her to our very special celebration. And then um, I got a really nice note from um, Deacon Jerry and Lee Garrett. So it said, after much soul searching, we have regrettably decided that it would be best if we not come. We have avoided all indoor celebrations for two years, being very cautious of Jerry's health. He's still able to get around with the help of a cane and, uh, and Lee's arm, but has other health issues that put him at risk. Both of us were so very excited to get the invitation and would love to see all our good friends again, but have decided that it is too risky at this time. Our love and prayers will be with you on Sunday, June 5th. And then Father Gagno, thank you so much for the invite. I would normally say yes, but Sunday I'm by myself with baptism afterwards. True for many these days. My very best to parishioners, I have many happy memories when there is a seminarian with Father George Heyman and then later as pastor. May God bless you all, Father Gagno. So I just wanted to share those with you, I thought that was. Thank you. All right, our caterer is going to call tables, so um, let's eat. <laughs> Father Mr. Tech has to stay here. Oh, praise the God of the
is at a different stage than mine, obviously, but it looks a lot different than mine, too, because he said he bought four sheep. <laughs> that was his preparation for his retirement. So anyway, he, said, he sends the following, the following message. Um, Dear parishioners and friends of Church of Epiphany, Sodus, New York. <laughs> so I'm in the right place. Um, happy and holy centenary. All of us here at Father Taya Jubilee School community take this opportunity to congratulate you as we thank God with you for the many blessings over the last 100 years. We share in those, ble in those blessings through your friendship with this school, which started after Father Taya be began serving uh, our parish in 2006. And over those years, you have given hope to many of our students and their families, and we, ce and we celebrated with you. Uh, I miss being with you there, but I know you have our bishop with you today. Um, our bishop, Matano, will bless you with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit on this day, and he'll bless our first step for the next hundred years. We thank God for our past parishioners and look forward for our future parishioners. Um, and he's all, he says that he also feels very encouraged by the members of St. Mary's and Epiphany who formed the steering committee and all have been working hard to make the occasion successful. Uh, blessings, uh, Father Simon Peter. So uh, those are the, the, the greetings that, that he wrote for you and, and I know that he was very uh, grateful for all of the work being done uh, while he was still here seeing the, seeing the preparations going on. Um, and, uh, you know, some of you I know uh, were kind of uh, sad that he's, not, that he's not here right now, but, you know, he's been stuck here for quite some time, so uh, we're, we're happy that he could make it, uh, make it back home uh, whenever he could, now that he finally could. Uh, and so keep him in your prayers. He'll be back with us in, what, three weeks, something like that. Um, so uh, I've been in contact with him. He's always asking how things are going and that he, and he assures me over and over that he's praying for you. So yeah, that's the word uh, from Father Simon Peter. Um, as far as uh, 100 years, I've only uh, been here for one of them. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave most of the talking to those who have been here for more than that. But I could just say, uh, having only been here for one year, thank you all. Uh, once again, for your for your welcome, you've all been very good to me, and I assume that means you've been good to a lot of people over the years before that. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Father White. Uh, the bishop talked a little bit about our history when during his um, homily, and. It's really hard to celebrate 100 years if you don't talk a little bit about the history. Um, Denny has a pretty cool um, slideshow of our history. And if anyone, we will have two of those uh, DVDs available if anyone wants to take them out um, after today. And Rita and her committee, I think Karen, and I'm not sure who else helped to pick out some stuff that is on the, uh, the slideshow. But um, I think Denny spent more time on the centennial than anybody, and um, he did just a wonderful job. But there, you'll see some of the other things that he's done. All right, just um, um, the bishop talked about 1916. That's when our first parishioners started meeting together. They meet. They met at people's houses, they met about the grocery store, and it wasn't until 1922 when the present site was actually purchased and the construction began. Um, I don't know what they expected, but what happened in 1922 was there, there was an anti-Catholic movement and members of the Ku Klux Klan actually burned a cross in front of the building. So, those people had to have been very courageous back then to keep the faith and to keep it going. 1924, the church construction continued. 14 parishioners each donated $1,000 for each of the state windows. I looked up how much $1,000 would be today. Any guesses how much? If you were to buy one of those today, $1,000, what's your guess? 10000 75 All right. Some of you are too low. Some of you are too high. All right. 
according to the internet, and I'm sure it's correct. $16,906.96. So think about it, in 1924, to donate that to your church. I mean, we really had some wonderful <coughs> parishioners helping us out in the very beginning. 1930s, we had the Depression. There wasn't enough money to keep the church open, and the rectory and the barn were actually rented out. And I bet they were having mass up in that grocery store. I bet they were still getting together. 1942, the payments on the mortgage resumed. And in 1958, they actually burned the mortgage and they had a big party down at one of the farms. 1970, Saturday Masses started at Epiphany. Mass in English became a regular practice. 1982, most of us, a lot of us, remember Deacon Ed Surgeon, and he was one of the first deacons um, that we had, as, as far as I know. Um, and he was here for quite a long time until I think he went to Penny Ann. 1983, we celebrated our 60th anniversary. The altar was turned around, the priest faced us, and the altar railing was removed. 1984, the ground was broken for this center, the Father Kavanaugh Parish Center. 1985, the Christmas sharing program moved from the Sotus Elementary School to this building. 1991, the Spanish Mass was implemented. And I think I remember Father Daniel, when he got the assignment, he had to learn Spanish because he was one of the celebrants for that Mass. But now the Spanish Mass is in Marion. 2006, Father Simon was um, named pastor, so he's been here since 2006. 2009, St. Mary's Epiphany and St. Rose merged, and we're called St. Maximilian Colby. 2013, we got our ramp, and uh, luckily, in the past year, just after the pandemic, we got it renewed, and it's beautiful. This one also. 2018, Father Amato came. And that's when Father Simon wasn't responsible for two churches, but four churches. But luckily he had an extra helper to help him out. And here we are in 2022 as we celebrate our centennial. Now having said all that, I'd like to honor our longtime parishioners. And I know there's some of you out there, some of you who have been here 50 years or longer. And I'd really like it if you could stand, if you would, or at least raise your hands, because it's you guys that made it possible for us to be all sitting here. So who's been here? Who's been here for 50 years or longer? that we already knew, but we forgot. 
that, but he, he reminds us of some of the little things that we need to be reminded about. Father John, I just met actually, we had a nice tour over to um, St. Anne's a couple weeks ago. Um, I enjoyed Mass and we had a little coffee hour after and um, I'm so glad that Father John was able to come so Father um, Simon could have as much needed vacation as sad as I am that um, Father Simon isn't here. Um, and we have a few people from the community and I think I revere from the Presbyterian Church is the only one that's still here, if I'm not mistaken. But we had the uh, a deacon from the Episcopal Church at the Mass, and I think that's it. All right. All right, so um, we had special people helping us out. And without the people from St. Mary's, believe me, this wouldn't have taken place. Father Simon started um, at least a year ago. Actually, it was when Father Amado was still here, so it was more than a year ago. So Father Simon tried us to get a, tried to get us to get a committee together, and it didn't happen. So he goes, "Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll get Father Amato to get them to get a committee together." <laughs> well, that didn't work either. <laughs> so then he sicked Aunt Sass on us, and that's what he actually got it. So Aunt called me and she said, "You know, we got to get going." When's a good time to meet? And um, most of us are at the 8 o'clock mass on Tuesday or Thursday. I said, Tuesday at 9 o'clock works for us. I don't know that most people meet at that hour, but it was working for us. And believe me, without Ann, it probably wouldn't have gotten going because we, didn't, we just didn't do it. But um, Ann was wonderful. Um, she's instrumental in helping to get our celebration off the ground. She attended about all the meetings except when she wanted to go see her kids. Um, and she's been a great support. And Ann, where are you? Oh, you're in the kitchen. I have um, a plant here for you that you can come get before you leave. Oh, thank you. All right, let's give everyone. Let's give Ann. Okay, 
Jean helped us in developing, well, Linda, I guess, did most of the work. Well, I don't know who did most of the work. <laughs> but between Jean and Linda, you're going to be getting a little gift, a little while on. And Linda's, Linda's going to present it because she knows more about it than any of us. But again, um, you know, I didn't know about any of this stuff. So it's just nice, it's nice to have people that have more expertise than what you do. So I want to thank Jean and Linda. Let's give her a round of applause. than probably the rest of the committee combined. Um, Denny, the first thing he did was these cards, and there are some extra ones up here, because I brought them over from the church, if you didn't get one. Um, and he has um, a picture of the church on the top, and the inside of the church underneath, and I love the inside picture of the church. And then, and again, we don't, seem to acknowledge our prior priest, but we've had a priest here, luckily, since um, 1922. And um, if we didn't have these wonderful priests along the way, um, we wouldn't be in the place that we're in either. So um, Julie Costello happened to, he didn't know what to put on the back, and Julie suggested the priest, and I think it was just the best thing ever. But it was Denny who, um, who did these for us. But that's not all. Denny um, spent hours putting the slideshow together. And like I said, there's going to be two if you want to borrow them later on. You can do that. And again, it was Rita, Karen, and I don't know who else helped getting the stuff together for that. I'm not a history person. Um, I tell people that before the year of my birth, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm not that interested in history. But <laughs> So that's, that's that. Um, and plus, Denny's been photographing today. Um, but Denny deserves a great round of applause. He's done a lot of work. <laughs> and again, Denny, there's a, there's a plan here for you. And I want to thank Al also for coming and um, photographing for us. Um, I don't think any of them have eaten yet. I think they should, but I don't know. They think it's more important to take pictures than eat. I'm not like that. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. The next group of thanks are for um, the committee. And well, first of all, I saw that Jim Hall left, and I should have acknowledged him prior to him leaving. But um, we want to thank Jim Hall, and I'll, I'm going to see him Tuesday at another banquet, so I'll thank him, I'll thank him then. And Ginger Knapp for that beautiful cake. Mm -hmm. Honest to God, she did a gorgeous job. So um, thank you to both of them. The beautiful flowers that are here and the, f and the flowers along the, the windows. Joan Stell did those. Rita did the church flowers around the altar. Gorgeous. Kathy Grantine did a whole lot of work. Um, she dealt with the caterer. She um, took all the reservations and she worried about not having the oven work, but I guess he didn't even need the oven work. Um, Dennis helped. I sort of got things started with the banner, but Dennis finished that up. Helen, oh my gosh, she did all my typing. And you know what I like best about Helen is, um, well, yeah, I do like that. But the program, did you notice on the program how if you're in that picture, you look taller and thinner? <laughs> That's what I like best about it. <laughs> uh, Bob, um, he, the church is always immaculate. The hall is immaculate. He did that for us. Um, Rita prepared all the materials for the slideshow. Kept our flowers alive, um, is working on the church directory. There's going to be a church directory. You'll we'll learn more about that. All right, Dan Kuplutsky, where are you? Could you tell us how many years you've been lecturing in this church? Uh, let's see, well, this church since 74, uh, overall since uh, 1970. So, 70, so, what does that mean? 50 years overall, and uh, let's see, 46 years in this church. 
There you go. There, he deserves applause too. Karen Marks was, um, she was on the committee, she came to the meetings, and she helped us in any way we wanted. So, um, we want to thank Karen also. So we had greeters, ushers, the choir, honest, have you ever heard a better sound system than our church today? today's event with the church name and the 100 years from 1922 to 2022 and uh, also along the outer circle the stars and the herald angels uh, the angels are left and right of the years remind us of the first epiphany uh, the angels really are super small and lost some of their detail but they were originally inspired by the beautiful uh, ethereal angels that hang in the pews in this uh, in Epiphany Church at Christmas time. Uh, I did double check the definition of, definition of ethereal. Those of you who know those angels, uh, and to, just to be sure, it's what I meant to say. And the definition was extremely delicate and light in a way that seems too perfect for this world. And that's exactly what I meant. So. Um, those angels um, are beautiful and ethereal. Uh, you, if you'd like, you can see a slightly larger version of that, the original angel up here afterward. But um, I think that's it. Altogether, I hope that you um, feel some of the history 
the community and the spirit of the church um, in this memento. Uh, also a reminder, I think you did say it, Sue, but um, this can be used as an ornament or clipped over pages as a bookmark. And if you do use it as a bookmark, I suggest keeping the inner circle with the church on it forward so you can still see the church and the name of Epiphany up above. So um, anyway, I just, again, was delighted to do it. I hope you enjoy it. And of course, this wonderful occasion of 100 years of Epiphany. Oh. beautiful and we sort of changed the stream we almost had the uh, the angel in the center and Karen suggested the church and it was like okay you know we'll just do whatever you want and they changed it so yeah all right this is the audience participation part of this so um and this is about memories and um, feel free to raise your hand, speak out. And like I said, I promised the bishop uh, to a clock. I shouldn't, yeah, we should be able to do it. Okay, here we go. So think about some memories you have that maybe something, maybe at least one other person remembers. Who remembers being greeted by Mona at Mass? There we go. You remember Mona, Father? Yes, okay, I did. cool. Who remembers? Now you're going to have to really think about this one because it was in the mid 70s. Who remembers a harmonica player playing the Ave Maria? Yep. Who remembers that? Come on. I was here then. Suzanne, you, you still remember that? You were probably just a little girl. <laughs> Who remembers a Lenten well with running water on the altar? Yeah. You know, I shouldn't say this part of it, but um, the water was really loud. And I still need to go to the bathroom with that. But anyway, I don't think it lasted more than one season. But, um, and I think Bob Bacher did it. Made it, and it was really something. Okay, who remembers Father Dylan's bulletins? Yeah, that's what I have here. Um, Father Dylan's bulletins, often talking about Father Richard the Lionhearted, and he was from Lions. So yeah, I think yeah, I think if you were here, you would all remember Father Dylan. All right, when I was ushering this one day, Mary Padkonka came in. You know, and the one thing I forgot to say, and I hid it in my notes and I forgot to say it, all this history that was written was written by Mary Padkonka. And her son and daughter-in-law are here, way over there. Church. Yeah. Thank you. So anyways, Mary comes into church this one day. I was ushering and must have been talking about birthdays. Mary walks in, I said to Mary, when's your birthday? And she said, today. And um, so it got to the priest and we ended up singing her happy birthday um, that day. So um, it was just sort of coincidental. Mary had, when Mary ended up leaving Epiphany, we had a big party for her here and it was from two to five or something like that. You know how people usually they're going to come in at 2, they're going to leave at 2.30. I couldn't get there until the end, so I walked in here at 5 o'clock. I think I came in from Buffalo. The place was crowded. People came at 2, they stayed till 5. So that's how loved um, Mary Pikeonka was. She was wonderful. All right, Helen Phillips. i got to talk about her with her bright smile and her lime green clothes. Um, <laughs> And I think she thought about coming today, but I guess it didn't work out for her. Who remembers longtime organist Dorothy Eastley and Elaine Costello? <laughs> they deserve a round of applause. Okay, 
and then there was Marge, Marge Baker. So you, you guys took turns, you just called each other and decided who was going to do it that week. Or... And so was the organ downstairs at that time? Yes. Yeah. Okay, who remembers when we used to do breakfast here? Okay, so I think we had an earlier mass, and we came over, and then you paid for it over there, and then I remember it was Peter Berganskis who would come around, and they had a piece of paper, and you'd tell them what you wanted, and they would bring it out. So that was, I don't know how many years ago that was, probably 30, I don't know. Like, like the bishop said, time goes really fast. All right, today, I don't know if you noticed, but John Irwin was here with Vera. So for years, and I told John I was going to do this, Leon Verstraight and John Irwin were our ushers every week. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. All right. Holly Baker. Holly Baker would bring small toys for her special friends at church. Yep. Yeah. Who remembers, of course, you do picking your special gift for Christmas sharing? Church, and he said, You'll recognize yourself. 
off of this sermon, but nobody else would know it's about you. <laughs> <laughs> and Aldrin Ness, I'm thinking, what is he going to say? He said it on the way out of church. Everybody who worked in school knew it was about me. <laughs> I wonder if he just wanted you to pay attention, so he Well, no, he was he was talking about a parent, because again, he was out in the community all the time, and I had substituted, and I think I was rather strict, like the normal teacher, and I had a child who wanted to leave at quarter of nine in the primary building to get to a classroom about half a hall away at nine o'clock, and I would not let him, because I knew his reputation. And so his mother was working at the coffee shop that was uptown at the time and complained to anybody who would listen to her about the horrible substitute. <laughs> <laughs> and father had the take that no, it's not a horrible substitute. It's somebody who disciplines your child and you should appreciate it. What Father Dylan and I both didn't realize at the time was how many people worked <laughs> and knew that child in this situation. But it was really kind of funny in the end. Anyone else yet? Anything they want to share? When you're talking about Father and Lily, I will tell you that when we had to call him to the house, I called the ambulance to the house and he arrived because he served on the ambulance. My son looked up and he had fallen. He thought he broke his back when he had bruises. He looked up and he said, Oh, God, am I dying? <laughs> I thought it was strong, it was just probably one. 
Um, who's going to start the plan? I don't know how to do it, so I can't. 